week. It's going to be a very short video today. And some of you might have heard the expression, the Cobber's house has no shoes, the Cobber's kids has no shoes, have no shoes. That's how I feel. I've been running around this whole week getting our virtual summer school ready. This is the first summer we've done summer school virtually. Oh, and you're going to hear my cat. <laughs> um, and so I've been running around on technology all week. Hi, whoever's joining in, uh, feel free to say hi below. I'm getting onto my comments on my phone. And um, let's make sure my volume's turned down. Oh, so we got Katrina, Jessica, and Clarissa. Hey, guys. And we have some other people coming on, too. Hey, welcome, welcome. Oh, yeah, look at that. Katrina already knows the drill. So if you're coming on, say hi. Drop your favorite travel emoji. Let me know you're tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about ways to fly for free. Hey, I don't see who it is that's saying hi. Let me see. Oh, that's... um. Hopefully, yay. And Jessica, hey, hey. And other Jessica. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So like I said, this is going to be a super short video today. Um, a little lesson. Hi, Karen. Hi, Katrina. Other Katrina. Oh my gosh, we have two Katrinas, two Jessicas. <laughs> so funny. Okay. So today we're talking about ways to fly for free. And like I said, super short video today, but I think it's worth covering because, oh, hi, Nadia. Hi, Christian. Because once you can find ways to fly for free, honestly, everything else gets so much cheaper. You know, like the two biggest expenses you usually have when traveling are the flights and the accommodations, right? And usually everything else you can kind of work out to be a lot more affordable. Oh, I love that one, the beating heart globe. I've actually been trying to figure out how to do it. I can't figure it out. So if you know, let me know. Oh, I love, I love the emoji. Yay, yay. Love it. Love it. Oh my gosh. There's so many people on right now. It makes me so happy. And also a little sad because it's my shortest one and I'm not wearing makeup. Watch next time. If I put my makeup on and do my hair, no one will be here because that's just how those things work. Right. Do any of you ever notice that when you like dress up really nice, I don't know if you guys, maybe you dress up nice all the time, but when you dress up really nice and then you go to the school and the kids are like, Whoa, Miss Roberts, what's going on? That's how I feel like, <laughs> that's how I feel like with makeup. So sometimes I like to keep it like, I guess, normal, casual, so that when I really want to spice things up, I can do that. Okay, so welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about flying for free. And um, like I said, super, super short video for today. And um, and yeah, and, and I'm also happy to talk with you guys more, but I also wanted to kind of see, oh, Jan is here. Alicia is here. Hi. Hi. So today we're talking about flying for free ways to do that. There are many ways to do that. And I know I'm not covering all of them. And I know there are some other super unique, amazing ways. I'm just not going to have a chance to share. But that's why you guys are here, right? We have a wealth of knowledge. We have thousands of well-traveled teachers in this group. So if I'm, as I'm talking, you think of a way that you've used that made it so you could fly for free. And if you want to share that, please feel encouraged to share that in the comments below. Interact, engage, drop those travel emojis off. Devin's watching. Hey guys. Hey. All right. So it looks like my live is running a couple of seconds behind me, but this is basically the, the PowerPoint, right? And this is Travel Hackers Academy. If this is your first time tuning in every Thursday at 7 p.m. Arizona time, almost every Thursday. There might be some Thursdays where we can't do it, but basically, generally, we show teachers way that they can travel better on a budget, for free, and paid. We're paid and for free, either way. And the reason I think it's so important is, especially right now, I mean, like, raise your hand if you are just itching to get out there and travel right now. I know that a lot of European countries are opening their borders to residents of the UK, to other residents of the EU. But if you're in the United States, it's a little more locked down for us right now. Um, and so I, I really anticipate we're going to have a lot more domestic travel this summer. Although for me, I ended up working summer school. But if you have a chance, go. Oh my gosh, we have so many amazing things in our backyard if you're in the United States. And I think people like me, we often take every opportunity we can to go abroad that we end up missing what's going on home, right? <laughs> Katrina's like, let me out. I know, right? Jessica Culver says, I have worked at conferences in order to attend the conference and have the flight covered and let student travel where the leaders flew free. And of course, use my miles too. Yes, combining them is a great way to do it. Awesome. So if you're new here, just a little introduction to who I am. I do a few different things in the travel industry in addition to being a full-time teacher. 
I'm a tour operator and guide. So traveling teachers is my company. I arrange trips that are more so structured like, excuse me, like meetups. And Jessica says she's so ready for international travel, but enjoying things close to home right now. Yeah, you can have both, definitely. So I'm a tour operator and a bit of a guide as well. When people come and visit me, I'm, I naturally act as a guide. Oh my gosh, can you hear my cat going crazy? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with her. Um, I'm also a trip leader. So when I'm leading those trips and I'm actually on 24 seven, I'm taking on that role of a trip leader, being the on point person for everything. If any of you have led a trip with EF tours or any other kind of company like that, or with your school, you know how much work that is, but you also know how amazing and fun and rewarding that can be. And I absolutely love it. And I specifically love working with teachers on that. I'm also a travel blogger. I run two blogs right now. Oh, Sanji's here. Hey, Sanji. Oh, now I'm really nervous. Sanji works with me. It's so weird to go live. I was actually just talking with her about this. Uh, was it this morning or yesterday? How weird it is when you're actually talking at the camera and you don't see somebody in front of you. Um, so hi, Sanji. Good to see you. So I'm also a travel blogger, right? I have the travelingteachers.co and I also have Teach Blog Travel. They're both slightly different. I'm also a travel agent and I'm also a travel business coach and there's other things I do too. But all of these things really do work wonderfully together and I have been very privileged to find ways to travel well on a budget for paid and for free. So let's get into it. If you're new, I have had the privilege of going to many different beautiful places. I especially love and enjoy going to Northern and Western Europe. Hey, Casey. Um, I, you know, I first started being interested because of the history and because of my heritage up there. But then I just kind of went everywhere. You know, my first big European trip was Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and, Je and Germany. And I just couldn't stop. You know, I just kept going. And and that was really, honestly, the first one, the big one, that was a really transformative time for me. And, you know, I've always done trips here and there, but that one was where I could really see what is it that I enjoy, what lights me up. And, and you know, if, if I'm just going to be real with you guys for a minute, sometimes you feel a little bit guilty if you're a teacher and if there's something that you think you might enjoy even more than teaching, right? Or as much as, I don't know if anyone in here can relate to that. And that's one of the reasons I asked that poll the other day to see kind of where everyone's at. Like, are there people who are happily teaching and they're going to keep teaching? Are there people here who want to retire soon? Are there people here looking for different kinds of jobs or who want to do things on the side? Um, I love teachers and I love working with teachers, but I would love to be able to do that full time, right? So a couple of norms and do meet that all of these episodes of Travel Hackers Academy do get recorded. Some of them are going to be put into the Travel Hackers Academy course, which you get um, access to portions of that for free by being a part of this community. If you would, it'd be great to give StreamYard permission to so I can show your name in comments. Of course, I'll drop any relevant links I mentioned at the end of the live stream. Please engage. That's what makes this really fun, right? I can only speak from my research and experience, but we have so many well-traveled teachers here. If you know of a unique way to fly for free, or maybe you've just done something and found that out in travels, definitely share. And of course, as always, keep all dialogue respectful and helpful. I always say that, but I feel like I never have to because you guys do that anyway. Okay. So there are really two categories. There's actually, I would say, three ways of to fly, fly for free, three categories of that. But I focus on two of them. So I'm going to go over the more traditional ways, which some of you may know about, some of you may not. But then I'm also specifically going to go over some industry perks. And those are ways to fly for free when you work in the travel industry, because I know some people have showed interest in that. And so they're kind of still learning. So one of those ways is through tax exemptions. Let me just say a disclaimer and say I am not a tax advisor. Oh, hey, Nicole. Hey, Harley. Welcome, guys. If you're coming in, drop your favorite travel emoji. If you're watching this on the replay, put hashtag replay. Let me know where you're in from. If you've found a way to fly for free, be sure to share that as well. So tax, tax exemptions. If you are a tour guide, tour operator, trip leader, travel agent, if you do any of these things. In fact, even if you're a travel blogger that writes about specific destinations, you can actually write off travel on your expenses. In fact, as a teacher, this is something really clever that I just found out um, from someone else. So I know another teacher who made an LLC, so that's a limited liability company, to be able to open up their own business as an education consultant. 
And the actual, they actually didn't consult much, but all those conferences they went to, and maybe if they would co-present, they would write those off as business expenses. And they actually are able to expense more that way than the 250 that were allotted as teachers at the end of the year. So not saying everybody would do that, but that's definitely something clever. And of course, if you work and travel, then you can easily do that a tax exemption for that. I think I got an extra 2,500 back because of all the travel I was able to expense because it was either directly or indirectly related to that. So definitely something to consider. Deanna says, hello, fellow traveling, travel loving teachers. Yay. Free upgrades. Okay, so this one doesn't exactly fall into free, flying for free entirely, but it can. So there are certain ways that you can get free upgrades. One really good way is if you have like an elite or advanced member status of a certain airline. Um, I had the privilege of having a friend who worked for American Airlines. And so I got to go to their lounge, which was so nice. I felt a little bad for the business travelers around me because I definitely had my big backpack and my outfit that I've been wearing for like 18 hours, but it was lovely. And those little things of being able to have a comfortable place to be on Wi-Fi, to get free coffee, to get those like little snacks that can save you money on meals over the length of your trip, honestly was a godsend. So free upgrades to stay in lounges or just even upgrades to your actual seat to first or business class are always great, even if you can't fly entirely for free. Teacher travel program. So Jessica kind of touched on this already, but either whether you're going like as a conference for educators or you're going on an actual program where the organization takes you around to explore different historical sites, they often pay for your lodging, your food, everything, and then also your flight as well. Or sometimes they'll give you like a stipend back. And so you can get your money back even if you have to pay it in advance. So if any of you have experience with that, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Share with us about that. Um, yeah, and then also leading student trips. So EF is a really big one. In fact, definitely stay tuned for that in these next coming weeks because we're actually going to be interviewing not only someone who worked with EF Tours, but someone who has done EF Tours as a trip leader. So we'll get to hear both sides of that perspective. So if any of you have considered doing that, taking your students on trips, you're going to be able to hear that conversation um, and learn more about that. And of course, travel agent fams. So a lot of you already know that being a travel agent is something I do. And honestly, like when I first got into it, it wasn't just to make money, although you can, and I am making pretty good money from it but that's not really what it is. What I'm really excited about is all of the travel industry perks that come with being a travel agent. Um, like, okay, so in October, I'm going to be going to Greece. And even for that alone, I would be so ecstatic. It's less than a thousand dollars total and everything is included except for the flight, except for the flight. But after all of my travel credit reward, travel, excuse me, travel reward credit card points, between that and then expensing it on my taxes afterward and it being very dirt cheap, I'm not going to pay anything for it. And that is the FAM trip. That's a familiarization trip that a company offers through my travel agency because they want travel agents to come and explore the area so they can sell it, right? And they wanna make sure you have experience with that vendor so you can really speak to it yourself. Hey, Michelle. Um, yeah, and then the really cool thing about that company, because it's so small and family owned, is they're actually throwing in a few days in Greece for free. Uh, excuse me, not Greece, Turkey. So I'm going to Greece for like a week, and then I get to go to Turkey for a few more days. Um, and I'm so excited because a lot of you also know I'm a Christian. I love early church history and learning about that. So I'm super excited. I have some comments coming through. Katrina said, I had a parent who found out I'd won a scholarship, but that it didn't cover airfare. And they bought me a first class ticket to DC for my scholarship. Wow. That's amazing. Katrina. I'm so glad you have that community. Jessica Culver said, and donors choose can pay for part of your flight costs for teacher professional development as well. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of teachers don't really know about donors choose, but that is an awesome resource. And it's not just about classroom supplies, although you can definitely use it for that. You can use it for field trips. You can use it for connectivity. I mean, just about anything you can think of that will benefit student learning. And that means your own learning because the students benefit from what you know, right? 
Jessica Macwix, I hope I'm saying your last name right, said, a great perk to teaching Spanish is that we do every two years, but I know Explorica does science-focused ones to Ecuador and other great locations. Yeah. Once you get to know those few um, kind of industry leaders, I mean, there's so many opportunities. And so my goal with this group, if you're new especially, is to get all of those organizations in so that you can find all of that information in one place, right? And it's, I mean, anyone could just post a link and say, this program's cool. And that's good, right? Sometimes that's all you need. But for me, you know, if I'm making a big time investment or money investment, I want to hear from teachers who've actually done it, right? I know that a salesperson can sell. I'm a salesperson, right? And not that there's anything wrong with selling. Selling is just saying, hey, this thing's cool. And I think you'd like it. But I want to hear from teachers who've actually done it. So that's one of the things I love about this group is being able to interview those teachers. And if there's a program that you've done and you want to share about your experience, let me know. And Christian said, you have to check out Ephesus in Turkey. Yes, that's on my list. I don't think I can do that on the October trip because I'll only be in Turkey for a few days, but that's definitely on the itinerary for June of 2021 before I go on a yacht trip with so many of you guys in Croatia. Oh my gosh, can't wait to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so those are some of the industry ways to stay, but I know that not all teachers and most teachers don't work in the travel industry. So if you're looking for more traditional ways to fly for free, or if you're just getting into this, of course, travel rewards credit cards. I think you guys have heard me say this so many times, but there's a reason they're so beneficial, especially if you're really good with your money and you're organized, or if that's something you wanna do. And if you wanna build up your credit while doing it, you can actually pay all of your regular bills using the travel rewards credit card, pay them back right away. And those are points you're accumulating every month, even if you're not making a really big purchase. The two that I have that I really love are the Capital One Venture Card because I get so many points so quickly. And in fact, just for spending a few thousand within the first 90 days of opening it, I got, I think, 50 or 60,000 free miles. So I already have like, between that and all these vouchers I have from cancel, canceled and rescheduled trips, I have so many free flights right now coming up. I just need to actually be able to use them. Um, and then Bank of America, I really like their travel rewards credit card as well, because with that one, you can actually buy travel anywhere. Like you don't have to buy through a portal or anything, although you can, but you can like buy say on Expedia or through like IntelliTravel for my website. And when you buy it, it codes it as a travel purchase. And then if you have the points, you can go back and basically get your money back by exchanging your points for money. So if you travel a lot, and if you know you're going to be pointing all of those expenses on that one card, and especially if you have a business or maybe if your spouse does and you want to put that on that card, it's a really handy way to build up those points quickly. And I'll make sure to drop the link for the Capital One um, in that as well after the live stream. Frequent flyer points and credit cards. So I do have to say this with a caveat, okay? I know some people who are religious about certain airlines. They'll only fly American Airlines. Me, if I'm going to Ireland, I'm going Aer Lingus. I mean, Aer Lingus just has amazing food. They have great customer service. And there's something about, and I don't know, maybe maybe this is a, hopefully it's not a consumptive culture thing of me, but there's something about, being still in the United States and you board your airplane, especially if you've already had to do a connection, you're tired, and maybe you're kind of in the thick of it and you're not as excited in that moment, but you get on and you hear that beautiful Irish accent and then you just get so excited for the trip you're about to have. I cannot sing enough praises for Aer Lingus. I, they've, <laughs> I mean, they've gone out of their way. I almost missed my flight to Dublin um, a couple summers ago. Um, because the connection was delayed and they held the plane for us. And that's like unheard of. They don't even have to do that. Excuse me, but they did for us. And, and, and they were just so nice and patient. They didn't make us feel bad. We felt rushed. Um, but they were just so helpful and calm and patient. And I just, I always remember that, you know, and it was probably just another day for them. Okay. And of course, another way volunteer to get bumped, super passionate about this. If you are flexible, Okay. If you can add a few days before you're going to travel, and especially if you can also add a few days after at the end, you have so many possibilities. Okay. You can get bumped on the way there and you can get bumped on the way back. So you can actually get two flights. So what I always recommend 
And I actually went over the art of the bump specifically a few um, sessions ago. And Ophelia said, I agree. Aer Lingus is great. Yeah, they're, they're the bomb. <laughs> and they're usually pretty affordable. But if there's a, another flight that's like only 100 or 200 less, I'm going with Aer Lingus. I'll pay for their service. Okay, so volunteer to get bumped. So a couple of things. If you want to do this, like I said, you have to be pretty flexible, right? May not work if you only have like a three-day weekend that you're trying to make or if you have a conference, especially if you're presenting at it. But if you have a little bit of flexibility, definitely try to get bumped. Make sure that you have everything in carry-on only, which pro tip, by the way, um, recently within the last couple of years, they've made it so that the most economy class is the last to board anyway. That means that that luggage is usually going to get checked, but it's going to be the last one in, right? So there's no point unless, you know, unless you have stuff that you feel like you want to check, there's really no point in paying for check baggage, 30 to $60 each way, because if you're in economy class, it's going to get checked anyway, most likely if, if it's not really small. Okay. So go carry on only. Always arrive for international flights at least three hours in advance for domestic two hours in advance. And I know some people will say, nah, you don't have to do that for like, you know, Edinburgh airport. Okay. True enough, right? If you're flying between like Ireland and Scotland or Scotland and, you know, England, maybe not. But the reason is because you want to be one of the first ones there. You want to build rapport with the gate agent because they are the one who will ultimately decide if there is an oversold flight, who will get those bump tickets. And so when you get there, be the first one, be friendly, be calm, say, hey, um, I just wanted to check the status of this flight, see if it's oversold. If it's not, then you can't get bumped. But if it is, you can say, I would like to volunteer to be bumped. And usually what will happen is that gate agent will hold your ticket for you. And then if there is a bump later, usually you don't find out till the very last minute, then they will exchange your ticket. They'll tell you when you're going on a later one. Maybe you'll even get an extra day there with some accommodations, who knows? And, um, and then they'll give you your voucher. So, I mean, it's definitely worth checking. And there's a bit of game playing in there too, because usually they offer the lowest possible amount of compensation first, and then they go up and up and up if people aren't responding. So you kind of have to decide, like, do I definitely want a free flight no matter how much it is, or do I want to play the game a little bit and try to get more? So a little bit of strategy there. And then companion ticket benefits. So certain airline um, benefits like lounges and certain airline credit cards give you a companion ticket benefit. Usually it's like every year that you renew, um, I'm blanking on thinking of an airline that does this right now, but I know a few of them have. And if you have one of those, talk about it below if you've used a companion ticket. So they'll give you like a, a free ticket or a voucher for X amount of dollars, right? And so that's really nice because maybe if someone else has already paid for their trip and you kind of decide last minute that you want to go along, you can use your companion ticket benefit to go along with them or vice versa. If you're going on a trip, someone else wants to come with you, you can use that companion benefit. Hi, Sam. Welcome. So yeah, and, and companion ticket, another uh, place you might have heard that before is if you know someone who works for an airline or sometimes even at the airport, depending on the agreement with the airline, they can sometimes get you a free companion ticket, just like how people work at Disneyland and they can get people in for free sometimes, or they get some, or excuse me, they get so many tickets per year. That's something you can look into. Um, word of warning with that though, if you are on an employee companion ticket, you usually do have some requirements as far as dress code, like this probably wouldn't be okay. I would probably go in business casual. Okay. And, um, <laughs> this is not a traditional way. This was actually supposed to be on the other slide, but monetizing your travel blog. So I know a couple people in here have recently started travel blogs. That's great. I love it. I can't wait to talk with you more about that, but there are actually ways that you can not only stay places for free by submitting like an exchange for like, I'll do a 500 word article in exchange for this, or I'll take this many high quality photos in exchange for free night or whatever. But you can do the same thing um, with flights as far as making sure that you're giving your, uh, yourself enough compensation for those sponsored posts. In fact, 
You could even become an affiliate with certain airlines. Um, I know I recently became an affiliate with Qatar Airlines. And so um, I'm do, I've been doing a lot of Middle East blog posts lately. And so if people purchase through my links, then I get about 5% commission of whatever their flight is. And it doesn't cost the customer anything extra, but I do get commission, right? So that's something you can look into too. And if you're just starting a travel blog, but you're not sure whether or not you like want to do monetize it or you don't know how, I'd be happy to talk with you about that. Jessica said, if you're looking, if you're booking on Alaska Airlines, they offer companion tickets with their credit card. Go to book your ticket before applying for the credit card and they take $49 or off. So your total besides. Okay. Good to know. That's a good one. Thank you, Jessica. Okay. So that's it. Like I said, really, really short video today. Um, I know there are a million other ways that you can fly for free that are really unique. But just to be honest, it was just one of those weeks, guys. I'm the tech coordinator um, for our first virtual summer school. And it's just been very time consuming. It's actually really fun, but just a lot. So a little drum roll. We're going to talk about our most engaged member of the week. This person wins a $10 Amazon gift card in case you're new. And the most engaged member of the week is someone who's constantly sharing posts. They're commenting. Um, they're, they're talking back to people. They're looking at all the posts or making sure that they're just generally engaged. Right. And I actually go through the group insight analytics and find that. And the most engaged member of this week is Hazel Pamela. Yay. So hopefully you're watching Hazel. Um, if you're watching on the replay, be sure to message me your email address so I can email your $10 Amazon gift card to you. And that's not all. So every week, if you are new, we also do a random name. If I can find my name picker. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So we do a name picker list. Oh, that's not it. Name picker. Nope, that's not it. You know, it's funny it's like I use this tool every week and um <laughs> isn't it funny like you, you use something every week and you still don't have a bookmarked I don't know if any of you guys are like that where it's like you don't think about it until the actual moment comes up sorry about that guys Oh, you know what? I know why. That is why, because I'm on another window. There it is. Comment picker. Awesome. Sorry about that. Ashley's watching. Jamie's watching. Hi, hi. Okay, perfect. So if you're new, this is how this part works. I pick a name from someone who's been on, who's been engaged with this live. So go ahead and start. Yeah, I don't, it's commentpicker.com. And you know what's funny, Ophelia, is I use this exact same one every single week and then I always forget. So I'm actually going to bookmark this right now. Boom. Done. Okay. So go ahead and type your name below in the comments. I'm going to type your name into this box. This allows me to see who's watching right now. So go ahead and type your name in the comments. That way I don't forget you. And I'll put your name into the comment box and then we will draw a name in just a minute. In a poke. You know, I'm actually have to use last names today. Elizabeth got on. Mr. Hunter. Anna. You know, it's funny, we have like over 3,000 people in this group, and yet there are really only maybe 100, maybe 200 or few that are super, super involved and engaged. I don't see any other names coming through. There's always another Jessica. I know, this is the first place I've lived in that there hasn't been another Brittany. It's pretty rare that I'm in a place where there isn't another Brittany. <laughs> but yeah, Jessica is a popular name too. Okay, let's see who else was commenting. Sanji commented. Let 
training days on there too. Who else? Who else? Who else? <laughs> Hi, other Jessica. Oh no, you guys are friends, huh? That's so cute. I know every other girl in the 1980s was born in Jessica. I know Jessica's and Brittany's and Ashley's, right? There's like so many Ashley's too. Okay. So here we go. So this person that I draw right now is going to get a travel goodie gift bag. And if you haven't gotten yours, I'm so sorry. Some of the Sephora orders were actually kicked back to me. So I also have some travel goodies, like little journals and stuff I'm going to be sending. So hopefully that guy will get to you guys sooner. Okay. So here we go. Pick a name. Drum roll. So weird being the only one that I can hear the drum roll for. And the winner is Elizabeth. Everybody say, yay, Elizabeth. Yay. Congratulations. So Elizabeth, if you are watching this, even if you're not watching this, I'll go ahead and tag you in case you just logged off. Go ahead and message me a mailing address for you so that I can, uh, another Elizabeth, oh my gosh. So Elizabeth Ogle, go ahead and message me a mailing address for you and I can send that over, okay? And I think think, yeah, I see a little bit of a lag. So I'll give that a second to catch up. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to save result and cool. I knew, you know, you could do this. You can save and share it. Neat. Learning something new every day. All right. So let me go back to this and let me just say, Oh, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Haven't seen you in a while. All right. So just to let you guys know, we do have trips coming up. Christian just posted in the group earlier about how she's like dying to get out there and how there's just not enough travel going on. We have a lot of travel coming up. We are going to Finland in November. We're going to observe some classes and we're going to go find some reindeer. We're going to chase the Northern Lights, mush with some huskies. I can't wait. And then we're also going to Saint, to Ireland the week of St. Patrick's Day. We are so close to getting those details nailed down. Um, so if you're actually interested in going to Ireland because we're trying to get a group of 10, can you just put a comment below? Like if you actually think you're going to be able to go and you want to go say, me, I want to go to Ireland because that'll give me an idea because we can really only do it if we have 10 people. Um, and then <laughs> I can't even believe when I say it. So next summer, 2021, June through July, we're going to be island hopping on a yacht in Croatia. I literally can't wait. And um, this is, we only have a few days to really get in at 25%. Before June 30th, so that's five days, guys. After that, you have to have 50% down. So if you know you want to go, but you don't have like 400 right now and you want to secure your spot, make sure you pay that 206.25 and get that in so you can go. Yay, Katrina, it'd be so fun to go to Ireland. I can't wait. And then we're also doing an on-land Croatia trip that's only one week, and I only have five spots available for that one. It's going to be a much smaller group, okay? So if you're interested in that, let me know ASAP. Um, yeah, and we have all kinds of stuff going on and I'll make sure to drop that trip link for you as well in those comments so that you don't miss anything. Um, but yeah, definitely come with us. I really want to, but it depends on the cost. Yeah, of course. Um, they're going to be probably about 1800 for Ireland. I'm still working it out with them, but that's what it's looking like with the conversion of euros to USD right now. Okay. And so those are our trips. I'll put those links below for the ones that are already up. And then remember, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Arizona time, we have Travel Hackers Academy. Over these next few weeks, we'll also be going to talk of talking about specifically teacher travel programs and opportunities. So a little bit less general travel information and more specifically teacher focused. I know it's kind of hard to talk about those things right now because so many of them have been canceled or rescheduled, but I still think it's so good to know about this about a year or more in advance because then you can really plan your years and say, okay, I know I want to do this one this year. So I'm going to do this one next year. And I mean, I seriously know teachers who plan this stuff out like three years in advance because there are so many good ones and they don't want to mess out. Um, what else? Uh, Deanna says, will she go to Ireland? Her spring break doesn't line up. I know. I know. I'm so happy and grateful that mine happens to line up with St. Patrick's Day this next year. I can't wait. And then Deanna says, skip, or Katrina says, Deanna, skip school. And Jessica says, I have possibly finally figured out Arizona time. I know, Jessica, it's a struggle. And then, you know, what's funny about that is we don't do daylight savings time here in Arizona. So once everybody finally has it figured out, then we have to start over again. Isn't that so annoying? Oh, 
And then other Jessica says, ditto. Katrina Polk says, all of our outdoor ed trips in our trip to DC is already canceled next year. Oh my gosh, for next year? Wow, that's so sad. Um, well, I I have travel planned for October. I'm pretty confident it's going to be happening. But of course, like one thing that this has taught us is that we're never really in control, right? I mean, we always have to be prepared. And if you want to work and travel or gosh, I mean, even as a teacher, right? You have a plan A, plan B, plan C. I mean, most of our administrators don't even know if we're going back in person next year. So we just have to be ready to roll with it. And I think that's why teachers make such good travel industry professionals because we already know and we can do without resources. Jessica Culver said, I did St. Patrick's Day in Ireland 2013. You'll love it. I'm seriously so excited. And that's also kind of a unique trip because I'm not really leading that one. Um, I'm kind of like, I guess I'm kind of co-leading. I'm more of coordinating, I'm coordinating a group, but then I'm just, we're coming alongside each other. And then it's actually locals in Ireland who are leading it, which is really exciting to me. So I hope you guys can go. Um, Jessica saying, I'm waiting to see it here if we have some kind of mandatory quarantine. Yeah, that's definitely true too. Um, that's a little bit of my travel as well as summer. Okay. So that's pretty much it guys. I will drop all those trip links below the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week at 7 PM on Thursday, Arizona time. Bye guys.